In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word became flesh and lived among us in grace and truth. In him was life, and that life was the light of all. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has never been able to distinguish it. Then your light will break forth like the dawn. And your healing will spring up quickly. The Lord will always be with you to save you. God's presence will protect you on every side. When you call, the Lord will answer. When we call for help, God will say, I am here. Let us pray together. Our loving God, we gather together in your name. We gather this Christmas season in a difficult year, in a year that has been difficult in many different ways. We bow before you, Lord, and acknowledge that some of us have suffered the loss of loved ones. Some of us have suffered the loss of our own health or the health of those we love. Some of us have experienced broken relationships. Some of us have lost jobs, have lost careers, have lost independence. All of us have lost that vital interconnection that we have with other people to be present physically with them, to touch, to hug, to hold. We bow before you, Lord, in this season of celebration and yet in this time that we acknowledge loss and the grief that comes with our loss, and we bow before you, acknowledging you as Lord, acknowledging you as our Savior in Jesus, acknowledging you as the God who is present with us by your Holy Spirit. We bow before you, Lord, and ask that you would forgive all our sins, that you would heal our brokenness, the brokenness that goes deep down within us, and that you would renew us and revive us with your grace in Jesus Christ. Our God, we pray this in his name. Amen. We turn to the Bible to hear what God would say to us. Reading from Revelation 7, verses 9 to 17. After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands, and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders asked me, These in white robes, who are they? And where did they come from? I answered, Sir, you know. And he said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat down on them, nor any scorching heat, for the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
We come together online acknowledging that this has been a tough year. This has been a tough year for everyone. But for those who have suffered loss in a variety of different ways, this year has been tougher than most. Things that we have counted on, things that we have expected to be there for us, have gone even for a time. The opportunity to be together in one space, the opportunity to, to give a hug, to hold a hand, shake a hand, even be near to whisper in someone's ear. Even for a time, those things are gone. And that is a loss to us. And then the loss that people have experienced this year. When I think of just the people that I know personally, and the loss they have experienced. I know people who have lost a spouse this year, people who have lost parents, grandparents, people who have lost a brother or sister, people who have lost a child through miscarriage, people who have experienced loss of health, loss of physical health, and the loss of mental health or a real struggle with mental health because of the isolation and being shut in. I know people who have lost their job, lost their career. And with that is a loss of independence, a loss of security. I know people who have lost significant relationships, loss of a marriage, broken relationship within a home, breaking of a friendship, conflict within the family. And I know there is more. And we are together right now to acknowledge this loss, these losses, and to acknowledge that they are hard and that they are particularly hard at this time of year. And so we look to the Lord for comfort and help and hope. We read from Revelation 7. And in that passage, we see a large gathering, more people than can be numbered, gathered before the Lord. And what we see of them what we see for us on that day will be fully and completely true then, but is still true for us now. At least on some level, all that we see there is true for us now. What do we see? Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Salvation is God's doing. We are not saved by our righteousness or by our moral goodness. Our salvation is fully and completely of God's grace in Jesus through his death on the cross and is rising again from the dead. Our salvation is in the hands of the one who loves us without reserve. In Jesus, we are the Lord's own children. In this passage, we read of those who have come out of the great tribulation. Now, some believe this points to a particularly difficult period of time that will happen in the future. Others see this as simply the suffering and the hardships that we experience in our lives throughout the years. Either way, it speaks the same truth to us who have suffered loss through death, who have agonized over broken relationships, who have found ourselves completely lost without a job, who have been devastated by the loss of our health. What does this passage tell us? What hope can it give to us? Where is our hope in the Lord? we read on and find that we are sheltered in his presence. 
We are secure in the Lord, sheltered in his presence, secure in the Lord. That does not mean that no hurt could ever come to us. This is not about being safe. It is about being secure. And our security is in the Lord. We are sheltered in his presence. We are sheltered, not from pain, but from everything that would try and pull us away from his hands. And nothing can. When the Lord has taken hold of us, nothing can pull us away from him. We are sheltered in the Lord's presence. We read, never again will they hunger or thirst. The Lord is with us and he provides for us and meets our needs. We read that the lamb will be their shepherd. This is a wonderful irony in God's saving grace. The lamb, Jesus, offered himself up as the sacrifice for our sins. God the Father raised him to life again, life eternal. And it is the lamb, this sacrificial lamb, that has become our shepherd, our good shepherd. And this shepherd knows us. Jesus has experienced the same joys and sorrows that you and I have experienced. Jesus knew betrayal by those closest to him. He knew hate. He knew rejection. And God, God the Father, suffered the loss through death of his son. Yes, he did raise him to life again. But he will also raise us to life again. He will also raise our children to life again. As the shepherd, he will lead them to streams of living water. Not only does the Lord provide for our needs physically, Jesus brings us to streams of living water. In him, we not only have life, we have eternal life. We have life in all abundance, even when it doesn't feel that abundant. He gives us a deep meaning and profound purpose in life. And God will wipe every tear from their eyes. God will wipe every tear from your eyes. Tears are very real. Tears can be very good for us when we grieve. But the time will come where there will be no more grief. And where there is no grief, there will be no need for tears. But here and now, we still know loss. And so we still grieve. And so we have tears. But even now, the Lord who loves us, even now, the Lord who loves you is with you, is with us. And he comforts you, he comforts us, he holds you. Even in the midst of a pandemic, when we can't be close to others, the Lord holds us close to himself. He comforts us and he gives us his own hope. And though this is still a time of tears, the Lord dries our tears. He is with us. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Our holy God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your word of hope, your word of comfort, your word that proclaims that you are with us, that you love us and care for us, and that Jesus, the lamb himself, is our shepherd 
and will lead us to streams of living water, and you, O God, will wipe every tear from our eyes. We thank you that you shelter us in your presence. Make us aware of that. Bless us with faith to trust that you shelter us in your presence, that you hold on to us, and that you dry our tears. Our God, all this we pray in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Into the darkness of this world, into the shadows of the night, into this loveless place you came, lighted our burdens, eased our pain, and made these hearts your home. Into the darkness once again, O oh, come, Lord Jesus, come. Come with your love to make us whole. Come with your light to lead us on, driving the darkness far from our souls. O oh, come, Lord Jesus, come. Into the longing of our souls, into these heavy hearts of stone, shine on us now your piercing light. Order our lives and souls aright by grace and love unknown. Until in you our hearts unite, O oh, come, Lord Jesus, come. O oh, holy child Emmanuel, hope of the ages, God with us. Visit again this broken place till all the earth declares your praise and your great mercies own. Now let your love be born in us, O oh, come, Lord Jesus, come. Come in your glory, take your place. Jesus, the name above all names, we long to see you face to face. O oh, come, Lord Jesus, come. O oh, come, Lord Jesus, come. The Light of Creation. Genesis 1. 1 to 5 reads, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. Anyone who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. We light this candle to remind us of those we have loved and lost. We pause to remember their names, their voices, their faces. The memory that binds them to us this season that we anticipate Christ's birth. May God's eternal love surround them. The light of peace. Isaiah 42. This is what the Lord says, the creator of the heavens, who stretches them out, who spreads out the earth with all that springs from it, who gives breath to its people and life to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles, to open the eyes that are blind, to free captives from prison, and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not yield my glory to another or my praise to idols. See, the former things have taken place and new things I declare. Before they spring into being, I announce them to you. And Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will walk in the light. 
we light this second candle to redeem the pain and loss, the loss of relationships, the loss of health, the loss of jobs, and the loss of financial security. As we gather up the pain of the past, we offer it to you, O God, asking that into our welcome hearts and open hands you place the gift of peace. Refresh, restore, renew us, O God, and lead us into your future. The Light of Promise. Revelation 21, 1 to 5 reads, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who has seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. We light this candle this third candle, to remember ourselves this Christmas. We pause, to reflect and remember the past weeks, months, and sometimes, yes, even years of our downtimes. We remember the poignancy of memories, the grief, the sadness, the hurts, and the pain of reflecting on our own mortality. Let us remember that dawn defeats darkness. The light of hope. John 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows me will not walk in darkness. They will walk in the light of life. We light this fourth candle to remember our faith and the gift of hope that God offers us in the Christmas story. We remember that God, who shares our life, promises us a place and time of no more pain and suffering. 
let us remember the one who is the way and goes with us into all our tomorrows. Let us offer our prayers to God. Gracious God, we thank you for those we love and who loved us. We are grateful that they were part of our lives. We pray that nothing good in their lives will be lost, but will be of benefit to the world, that all that was important to them will be honored by those who follow. We thank you for the friendship they gave and for the strength and peace they brought. We thank you for the love they offered and received in life. Let us remember them. We thank you that in Christ we are forgiven for those times when we failed those we love in word and by our actions. We ask for healing of those deep wounds, for the times when our trust was betrayed or when we felt abandoned or were angry. And we ask that through our family and friends, through our hearts and our minds, in our courage and in our consciousness, that which needs to be set aside, forgiven and forgotten, can be released and redeemed by your grace. Let us remember. We pray for ourselves who are tested by sorrow and the changes that have happened in our lives that we do not try to minimize our loss or seek refuge from it in words alone, nor brood over it so that it overwhelms us and isolates us from each other. God, grant us courage and confidence in the new life that you have promised to us in Jesus Christ. Father, we ask these prayers in the name of the risen Christ. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you his peace. Amen.